ring experience between these two, obviously all the experience at the highest level for Guzman. 70 championship rounds fight. Would have been many more if he could have stayed a little disciplined at his craft and in his weight division. Call it, all right? I gave you instructions in the dressing room. You have any questions here? Any questions here? Okay, let's touch them up. Frank Gentile is the referee for our main event. It is scheduled for 10. Teddy, there's many times I will turn to you before we go on the air when perhaps we have a fight where it looks like there's a big advantage for one fighter, and I'll say, Teddy, we're getting rounds out of this fight. And I ask you now for our audience, are we getting rounds out of this fight? I'm not so sure that we will, but it's going to be really entirely up to Guzman. I don't know if it's up to Babon as much. If Guzman comes to fight, if Guzman comes to prove a point, and that means if Guzman attacks, and attacks especially to the body, well, then you're not going to get many rounds. But if Guzman just... Two, three, Went down to a knee. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I don't think Babon is the toughest guy mentally and on top of that this is just a huge step up in class but Bobona Guzman already has him hurt has him in front of him and is looking to size him up for a big shot and that could be good that could be bad for Guzman he should be using that jab to set up many shots not just looking for one shot. It's easy to avoid one shot, as you can see Pabon avoiding one big shot at a time from Guzman. Guzman was trying to land that left uppercut while framing him with the right hand for a moment, and you heard Gentile say, don't hold him there. One thing that doesn't help Pabon either is he's been inactive. Nine months since his last fight, go back four fights. He was off for a year and a half. Guzman is just the much better fighter, though. The class that's in that ring right now. Early in the career of Guzman, when he was a smaller man, he was knocking guys out. Lately, he's been out slicking guys. And that's why I said what I said when I answered your question when you said are we going to get rounds and then bang we got a knockdown I said no we might not get rounds but it's truly up to Guzman if he does this and he attacks it's going to be an early night if he doesn't the ball might be able to pick spots and survive there's a right uppercut to the body that time by Guzman both of the losses for Pabon have been by knockout, so you wonder about his chin. And they were both early in the fight, in the second round. Almost uh, holding behind the head when he landed that right uppercut there. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will show you that knockdown scored by Guzman. Stay with us. See right here that Pabon's looking for that southpaw Second left, but he opens out. himself up. Seconds out. You got your mouth and what happens is the orthodox left, the left hook gets there first. You see Pabon looking for that southpaw left hand, opens up a little. Bucks. And a very confident, very experienced Guzman beats him to the mark with his own left hook. A bone knocked down in that first round. I got Jorge from ESPN Deportes flanking me here, so he was translating what trainer Jose Bonilla was saying to Bamone. He was saying, wake up, get into yourself, and engage in the fight a little bit. Get smart. Let's see if he gets after it here in the second round. Got a bone in the corner of Guzman, and you would think in Guzman's own heart and mind, you want to make a sensational impression as you can tonight. Because of all the problems you've had in your career, as you talked about earlier, Joe, you're 35 years old. You've eaten your way out of opportunity after opportunity. Now here's an opportunity, as I said in the top, to take a bite out of a big fight, to get a chance to bite into a big fight. And the best way to do that is not to win a sluggish decision, but to win sensationally. 
And again, it's up to Guzman to bring that attitude. The one advantage that Pabon has, I don't know if it's an advantage because the talent is so immensely separated, so so much greater for Guzman. But Guzman, stop, stop. he is the smaller guy. I mean, he turned pro at 124. He's been as low as 121. Most of his fights between 122 and 129. He only moved up, Joe, in weight. His last five fights, well, Pabon has been a junior welterweight just about his whole career. But again, the better fighter, the sharper fighter, is Guzman. That right hand to the body by Guzman just sunk into that belt line of Pabon. That's where that Guzman time, should stay, to the body. He stays to that body, behind the jab, puts pressure on, doesn't get smothered. Bangs to that drum. Guzman will get a knockout. Right uppercut just as Pabon ducked forward and missed with that clubbing right hand that time. Not only is Pabon so many things against him, not only is he... I mean, it just looks like when this fight was made on paper and I saw it, I said, it's got to be a mismatch. Pabon not only stepping way up in class, higher class than he's ever been with Guzman, but he's doing it off a knockout loss. That's right. Powerful way. Francisco Castro, an upset loss that happened last June. He was taken out in the second round. Here, trying to escape the second round against Guzman. More to come. Stay with us. Hey, Bucky. You also showed the attitude of somebody in our business. Oh, he's a fighter. A real fighter. He really attitude. is. He got off the canvas, he came back, and he scored 30-something points. He behaved like a fighter. Right up until the very end when he had a very interesting chat with LeBron James about James's lack of a shot selection there in the final stop, 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 stop. You know, I talked warning about, from Gentile. Talked about Pabon's inactivity. Guzman, very inactive. Before his last fight, he was off 11 months. Then stop. go back 2007, he had just one fight. One fight in 2008, only one fight in 2009. Two fights in 2010. He spent more time at the buffet table as you chronicled <laughs> than he did in the ring. <laughs> that right hand almost straight low that time and he's been Stop. charging in with digging body punches. Those guys want a cut man in the corner. Guzman needs Jenny Craig. Could use the diet guru Freak. throughout his career. Would have made a lot more money and held on to some of these titles. Again, you see Guzman, very smart fighter, very calm fighter. He doesn't waste much. He's pretty accurate with his punches. Looking to pot shot with that right hand a little bit against the southpaw. Right there, he looked to time the southpaw. See, he was so calm, he saw the southpaw make that defensive move with his head, and he followed him with the left hook and just missed him. Just escaping that left hand that time. Guzman then digs in with another right hand, and Pabon tries to hold on. Right now, Pabon not trying to win, just trying to last. Trying to survive. We overheard his corner telling him in instructions that if you can hold on through the fourth round, then you got your best chance to make it. But right now, Guzman, to me... Oh, big right hand landed flush, and another thudding right hand. And Pabon is on shaky legs, and he goes down from a big body punch. Pabon a little credit, even though he's taking a beating here. Showed some heart, didn't stay on the campus, got up. I'm not so sure that body punch wasn't a little bit low either. But again, as I said early, if Guzman keeps the pressure, keeps the heat on, he's got a good chance to get a knockout. Off balance that time, just got out of the way of a right hand. And 
we come to the end of the round and we'll listen into the corner. There's the right hand underneath. That right hand to the body has been working all night for Guzman. Right hand up top, another right hand, he reloads. And then Guzman goes downstairs. Hard to see if that was a little south of the border. It was very close. He really wound up that right hand. Seconds out! Nia telling him, get away from the ropes, move your hands. That There's that low. right hand. What do you think, Teddy? It's low. Sweeping oh. across underneath that protective belt line of Pabon. Can't scored really a blame. knockdown, second knockdown of the night scored by the former two division titles. Can't blame the referee for missing that one. It was hard to even see without slowing it down. It's a super slow motion. That's the only way we could see it. It was lightning fast and was also sweeping away from the referee who was on the backside of Guzman. Ah, ah, ah. You see Guzman, he's looking to score a knockout, but he's looking to do it right now at least with one shot. One perfectly placed shot downstairs or upstairs. Not combinations. There's another right hand to the body. And that time stop, stop. they both open up, as can many times be the awkward case stop, with stop. a southpaw. Teddy's scorecard, of course, easily made up with those two 10-8 rounds. There's a low blow by Pabon, but... A knockdown returned by Guzman. Four, five, he hits you. Six, <laughs> seven, eight. Okay. Gentile in the middle of the Let's count go. gives an explanation to Pavon as to why that's being ruled a knockdown. It was pretty simple. He hits you. <laughs> yeah, well, Pavon's complaint stop, stop, was that it wasn't really a significant stop, knockdown stop. that hurt him. He was off balance. His legs were together. But, as you just said, the definition of a knockdown, you get hit a punch, you go down. But it was not a significant knockdown. Pabon is not hurt. Some of these right hands to the body, and there's one upstairs by Guzman. They're taking their toll. What's keeping Pabon in this fight, honestly, Joe, is, again, give some credit to Pabon. He showed hard. He got off the floor. But it's Guzman keeping him in the fight. Guzman only fighting sporadically. One punch at a time, just in spots. That right hand was almost behind the head as Guzman then eats a left hand from Pabon. And now a left hand to the body from Pabon, and Guzman, seemingly unaffected, takes two baby steps forward. More work to the body from Pabon. The best stop, uninterrupted stop, stop. work we've seen offensively from the Puerto Rican tonight. Scored. I don't know that it's a legitimate one, but again, off balance, the punches do come. A little bit of a push by Guzman and Pabon. Has another 10-8 round against him. Joe and Teddy with you here. At Hollandale Beach in South Florida. Stop! 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 Round five Stop! scheduled for 10. Stop! A couple times now, Jesus Pabon has not reacted in quick order to Frank Gentile, the referee. Let's look at the copy box numbers from round number four as Pabon is gaining a bit of confidence. You saw that they both landed nine power punches in that fourth round. What Pabon likes to do, we talked about in the fight plan, there's the south boy, he likes a pot shot. Covers up. Doesn't throw a lot of shots, but he looks for 
to spots, and he looks for him with that backhand, the left hand for the southpaw. And that's what he's looking for now, as he's gaining a little bit of confidence since midway through this last round. Usman almost inviting him to that body that time. And he tries to go upstairs for a moment, but Usman with that turtle defense, just cupping that left hand and then turning it into an offensive assault himself. And now places a right uppercut on the inside as he gets out of the way of the left hand. More body work from Pabola. And then Guzman just looks at him, said, that's all you have? Well, Pabon should look at, really, is when Guzman takes that right glove, watch it, Joe, he takes that right hand, he puts it all the way over on the left side of his face to block right hands. He leaves the right side of his face wide open to left hands. Ron Pabon, I'm trying to push Guzman onto the ropes again, get him in that same position, get Guzman to take that right hand over to the left side of his face. And what I would do is fake a right hook and then throw the left hand. Stop, stop! Sloppy fight, but a little bit better for Pabon the last round and a half. Undoubtedly. Now Guzman steps forward with a thick right hand. While swinging there. And he... Keep them up. Keep their punches up. Left hand by the bone straight a bit. You would think that a southpaw would want to use his lead hand, the right hand. Just like an orthodox fighter gotcha, would like gotcha. to use the left hand, but Pabon depends on that backhand, that left hand. If you think any battery will do, consider the journey of today's app. Friday night fights here in South Florida. Magnificent pool here at the Western Diplomat, where aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires for superior performance inspires what they roll into yours. But Goodyear, more driven. Round six of our main event has been controlled throughout by the unbeaten, now 35-year-old former titleist whose prime of his career was so greatly affected by weight issues. Joan Guzman has scored three knockdowns so far tonight against Pabon. See the average punches landed first three rounds, 17 to six, but the last two, as we've noted, Pabon gaining a bit of confidence, a little more willing. Guzman has a propensity to showboat every once in a while. And you saw a little display of that a moment ago. He did a lot of that, Teddy, early in his career when he was this fast-rising knockout artist in the 120s, a titleist at 122, and eventually went north of there. Right now, I'd rather see less showboating and more punches from Guzman. Seems as his weight has risen in his career, his punch numbers have dropped. Does the foot stop thing and is unable to land anything off of it? You know, you almost get the sense that he's playing at this point as he winds up the ball no, no, hold him. No, hold him. Let him go. Let him go. All right, I got you. Now he's throwing that jab, up jab, off the thigh. Stop. 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 The size advantage I talked about, Pabon being the bigger man, junior welterweight most of his career while Guzman started out at 124 pounds. If the weight is helping Pabon, it's helping him handle the punches and survive a little bit.
because what's really helping him is... Oh, he took a big left hand that time. See, that's the key. You said he took a big left hand. A hey, big left hand. Singular, not plural. Guzman has chances stop. to put them together, and so far he's been just doing one, one at a time. Here's a point being taken away from holding. Point deduction for excessive holding. And the hold that Pabone is in is just massive on the scorecards. Join the masters of style. Even trimming, a close shave, and accurate edging with the new Gillette Fusion Pro Glide Styler. New Fusion Pro Glide Styler and Clear Shave Gel from Gillette. Contact your provider to learn how to get ESPN 3D. To hear every story from every angle, go to ESPNRadio.com. Casado. Frank Gentile is taking a little extra time to start this round as they were cleaning up that red corner of Jesus Pabon, who's been down three times so far tonight against the former belt holder. You know, Joe, right now going on in another part of the country over in Denver, Colorado, or the Olympic trials. And I know that there's somebody of great interest to you there, Teddy. Yeah, one of the young men that's competing for a spot on this year's U.S. Olympic team to compete in London is one of the fighters from one of the Dr. Atlas Foundation Cops and Kids gym that we're very proud of. We're proud of all our kids. We're very proud of Marcus Brown, the light heavyweight, three-time New York Gold Glove champion. He won again today, his third fight in the tournament. He's in the finals tomorrow. Good luck, Marcus. Bring it home. And then, of course, this summer, Teddy, you'll be heading over to London for the summer games to broadcast boxing internationally, of course, here domestically. And perhaps you'll be seeing one of your hometown guys there in London. I think, Teddy, this is a critical year for us. Um, I think we're desperate, personally. I think U.S. boxing has to have a significant outing this summer. Yeah, I would agree with you. Our Olympic program has really dropped off and um, almost become irrelevant in the last several Olympics. So it is important to put our best foot forward, our best glove forward, and come back on the scene as hopefully as a power to be respected. And again... Good luck to all our young men there that are trying to make the Olympic team, and I would love nothing better than to be in London calling a fight for Marcus Brown, one of our own. Let's tell you what you're in store for next week on Friday Night Fights. Actually, it's going to be in two weeks. Next week, we will take a break. Championship week in basketball, as we do every year. We're going to be in... Cabazon, California, and a familiar face in the form of Kendall Holt in the main event. We'll be taking on Tim Coleman. That's in two weeks on Friday Night Fight. Break! Break! On well, one more round, we don't have to wait two weeks. Pabone will be going somewhere he's never gone before. He's been eight rounds twice in his career, but never past the eight, so he'll be... Gets past the next round, he'll be going into new territory, uncharted waters. And I suppose if I told you what would represent a good night for Joan Guzman, and I said there was a first round knockdown, third round knockdown, fourth round knockdown, but this fight's going to go into the eighth round, you may start to question things. We'll talk more about that after this short break. Just a quick flurry to open up this chapter. Break! Break! Stop. Break. Blowout on T. 
Teddy scorecard when you factor in the 10-8 rounds. Keep in mind there was a point deduction in the six. So the six round that you see is a 10-8 is because of the point deduction for excessive holding on Pabon. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame new class. 2012 class of inductees. June 22nd to June 24th. They will have some new men coming in. And oh, there, goes, my. there goes the knockout. Wade bent backwards. And a crushing blow just ends it. They're going to need medical attention to get in there for Pabone as they were pleading with him to stay on the canvas. You hear Gentile saying, get this guy a stool right now. Guzman just leveled him there. And you're going to see it's a misdirected punch. He was looking for one shot knockout all night. And Guzman finally got it by misdirecting the eyes of Pabone. Faking one way and going the other way. We're going to show you a few slow mo looks here. Hey, you guys got to back away. Let him. You see the straight left hand there, and then he never saw it. Watch it again. You okay? Left uppercut okay. there. Straight left hand hurts him a little bit. Oh. Okay. And then he never sees that one. I think there was a blinding right hand for Ford. Watch it again. There's a little flick and then a quick left hand. Little turn up the shoulder. Again, left hand hurts him. And then, again, left hand puts him on the floor. the left leg as you as we show you these replays here in the coming moments watch the left leg of Pabon because this is how you know when somebody gets completely level when they don't even have time to get their feet properly underneath them and they just go back I mean that left leg bent backwards and he was gone take one more look and watch the legs of Pabon uh, and also watch how now Guzman is a southpaw. You see that left leg as you talk about. But also watch, right now Guzman turns into the southpaw position. That is part of what set this up. He's a southpaw now. A moment before that, he was orthodox. Turning southpaw, redirecting where the punch would come from. Watch again. He's orthodox right now. Now watch. He lands the left hand. He hurts him. He turns southpaw, and the left hand comes from a different position. Back a little further, where he can pivot now the left foot into that left hand, generate a little more power, and come from a position that it wasn't coming from a moment before. A little bit of an experienced slick move by Guzman to set up the knockout. For the official particulars, we send it up to the ring to Bob Alexander. From the Western Diplomat Resort and Spa in Hollywood, Florida, your referee in charge, Frank Gentile, stops the bout at 1 minute, 23 seconds of the eighth round. Your winner by knockout, still undefeated, Joan Little Tyson Four knockdowns, including the one brutal left hand that finished things off. Two more looks here. Watch the left and watch it all come crashing down for Jesus Pabone. We have much more to come on Friday Night Fights. We'll have another fight in the ring, plus Bernardo's interview with Floyd Mayweather. So stay with us.